Намускар. Аштанга. Йога. Eightfold path. We are continuing with this topic. We already covered Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara. Now we come to the practice of Dharana. Dharana means <coughs> simply saying it is concentration. But if you go into the etymology of the word, the root verb uh, dhar means to, to hold, to hold. So it is a practice of holding something. Pratyahara is the practice of letting go, of not holding something. You let go. And dharana means you catch and you hold it. And you don't let it go. You must hold it. I can say, I can define spirituality just in two terms. It is an art of forgetting and an art of remembering. How to forget and how to remember. How to forget all those things that you don't want that they should define you. How to forget all your limitations and how to remember your infinity. How to remember that which you could become. So, and that is dharana. Holding the mind on one object. Uh, this is, I'm uh, speaking about spiritual meditation. Of course, in every process, meditation is involved. In every uh, process of cognition, when you are trying to know something, when you are trying to understand something, there will be all those processes. There will be pratyahara, uh, letting go of all other things. There will be dharana, holding into an idea that you want to know. So, dharana. Uh, concentration uh, consists of two important parts. Uh, one important part is ability of awareness. To be aware of your thoughts, what you are thinking right now at this moment. If you are not aware, uh, then you will not be able to hold. You can only hold if you have awareness. So this awareness is just like uh, one type of muscle that you build up in your brain. To illustrate, I can give you a picture. Uh, in a stormy sea, there is a, there is a boat. On that boat, uh, there is this helmsman and he is turning the wheel. So there are many waves and the boat is moving from here to there. But with the strong muscles, he directs the boat on the special course. But the moment this, this uh, helmsman uh, falls asleep, then the boat will go in so many different directions. It will stray, of course. So the first part of concentration is to be aware of what I am thinking at this particular moment. The moment this awareness sleeps, you will find yourself moving astray. Then again, you awake, sort of awake. It is an awakening within your mind. <gasps> oh, I'm doing meditation. Then with the, then how to return back? Now you have become aware, but you have strayed off the course. You have moved out. So now how to come back to the proper course? Another uh, component of concentration is will power. Will power. That is the muscles of the person turning the wheel. So you are, you are coming back. So in short, that is the process of concentration. Be aware. You know what you need to concentrate upon. Stay there on the course. The moment you lost your awareness, you, you, you are not awake anymore. Be in that state, then awake. This 
how you will awake. It is through the power of determination. By psychologically speaking, you need to awaken your heart. There is one particular center here. In yoga, we say Anahata Chakra. And this center controls uh, 12 emotions. And one of those emotions is called uh, Chesta. Chesta means an effort. Effort. So this emotion of effort, I am reaching it, I am conquering it, I am moving towards it. So you must awaken your heart. Before you start meditating, you take determination. For example, one type of determination is, I will repeat mantra 10 times. I will repeat mantra 10 times in a row. And even if one thought, which is not supposed to be there, will enter into that process, I will start again. So mantra one, mantra two, mantra three, mantra four. <sighs> What is going to be there for the dinner? And then you are strained, you are, you are moving away. <sighs> oh, I'm meditating. So then come back and then start again. Mantra one, mantra two, mantra three. So in this way, and you will find that uh, meditation becomes very interesting. When you achieve the state of concentration, the beauty of it, you don't have to be enlightened. You don't have to be any kind of advanced yogi or anything like that. If you really see it with a strong and powerful determination, with a powerful resolve, after you struggle 15 minutes, 20 minutes, even 30 minutes, then slowly, slowly, your brain starts to comply and it starts to go into this state of concentration. In that state of concentration, you will feel there is energy, there is inspiration, there is a desire to live awakens in you. And then, if you enter into the state of concentration in meditation, in the morning, I find this for myself very important, very crucial. If in the morning I sit and I do good meditation, then the whole day I have this energy. I want to move, I want to progress, I want to build, I want to create so many things because the brain is working, the juice is flowing. And when you are not concentrated, when you are unfocused, then it's just like you open the box with all the sorrows, all the bad things are coming out, there, out of there, when there is no concentration. But when there is concentration, there is inspiration, there is happiness, and there is constant progress in life. So try to be concentrated. Focus your mind. I will focus my mind. <laughs> it's just like fight, you know? You are going to the fight, like you are going to the boxing match. And then your ignorance, your unawareness is knocking you down. And counts one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I'm meditating. Stand up, <laughs> fight. So in that uh, situation, there is a fight. Meditation is a fight. It's a huge, it's a very fierce fight with your ignorance. So you need to beat up your ignorance and enter into the state of perpetual awareness and perpetual focus. What uh, other things that uh, this particular uh, side of meditation develops? It develops uh, something called Vigyana Maya Kosha is the fourth a very subtle layer of the mind. That layer of the mind is uh, responsible for telling the difference between truth and untruth, between truth and false, falsehood, right and wrong, something will work or something will not work. This is, I call this intuition, yes, no intuition. There are many kinds of intuition. There are three higher layers of the mind. So at the layer be below, I was explaining that in Pratyahara Yoga, there is this creative intuition, the ability for innovation, to create something new. On this layer, there is this yes-no intuition. 
when you are presented with a choice, what choice should you make? Yes or no? And this is very important. Uh, in life, uh, you will never be lost and you will never make any wrong steps if you develop that layer of your consciousness. And it is developed in that fight within yourself. <laughs> so this fight is awakening and uh, your life changes. Uh, you become, because you have same brain for all occasions of your life. It's not like you take one brain for meditation, another brain for work, another brain, brain for holidays. No. Once you develop those abilities in you, you develop those patterns within your brain, you develop this ability to control your thought process. That brain is everywhere. You will find in your work, you are very tenacious. You are very, you have this endurance and you're achieving your goals, no matter what. There may be uh, obstacles like Himalayan mountains in front of you, but you have so much endurance, you have so much determination, you keep going and keep going and keep going, and slowly, slowly, the Himalayan mountains also disappear, and you arrive at your goal. Uh, my guru says that there are three types of people. And the first type, the weakest one, is that the people who are never commit for anything. They believe either due to inferiority or due to laziness or due to some resistance within. They never commit to anything. They say, oh no, I will not promise. Oh, I, I cannot do. So uh, that is the weakest. And then a little bit stronger person commits, starts to go, and in the process, naturally you will be faced with obstacles. And when you face the obstacles, at that moment you give up. Why? Because the brain uh, has not developed that muscle, weak. So you develop the strength of the mind by every day sitting for meditation and fighting within. What is that fight? You need to keep an idea in front of you. For example, mantra meditation. You repeat Bhava Nam Kevalam. So, your task is to repeat mantra <clears throat> 10 times, exclusively focusing on the sound of the mantra and on the idea of the mantra. In the, in the next stage, I will explain about the final process, which is called dhyana. Dhyana means contemplation or uh, process of knowing. Now you are placing an object in front of you, looking at the object with your mental eye, with the eye of your mind. And once you're looking, you are able to study it, you are able to know it. So it is a prerequisite for dhyana, for the contemplation. So the fight is there to stay constantly focused on the object of your meditation. It is very, very, uh, how to say, it's very difficult but also very sweet. Once you start defeating the ignorance, you just feel like so much super human. <laughs> and that energy penetrates your entire life. So I'm very interested for your experience. So I will give you homework. Uh, please uh, see the video. It will be in the, in the, in the description section under this video about meditation. I'm teaching the technique of meditation. You practice that technique of meditation and uh, emphasize this concentration process and set up a goal for yourself, realistic goal. Try, let's say, I, I, maybe not 10 mantras. 10 mantras even for me, <laughs> after so many years of meditation, I will have to struggle for some time uh, and then I will come to that kind of level. But then once I concentrate, then it will go up and up. But it is hard. It's, it's not so uh, easy. But okay, let's say five mantras without interruption. And then you struggle and then uh, achieve the goal. And then write in the comments, how did it feel? So how you, uh, before meditation, what was your 
physical feeling, mental feeling, in the heart, the feeling of the heart, because concentration is done by the heart, by psychologically speaking. This is the center to, you know, of the victory, heart, the flame of the heart. This is very important. So, <clears throat> and then describe in the comments what changes happened to you after you have achieved the goal of concentration in meditation. And uh, I will be very appreciative if you uh, help to promote these videos by liking, subscribing, commenting, and sending this video to your friends, and so on and so on. Because just one video can change the, your entire course of life, because everything depends on your mind. Everything depends on, uh, on your mental fitness. Physically fit, mentally strong, spiritually elevated. Become like that. So, thank you very much. Looking forward uh, to read uh, comments from you and your experience in meditation.